The only way you're gonna get better, man, you gotta put the work in. Brothers on three. One, two, three, brothers! Everything that we do out here is for a purpose. Hey, you gotta get in there and fight now. You gotta get in there and fight. Let's stop that talking and let's just do it, bro. It's time to move on. Alabama week was epic, but it's over, and this Saturday in Oxford is every bit as big. guys ever talk about being the only two Mississippians uh, in that locker room here in a program at Texas? Is there anything to that at all, or are you guys kind of between? Uh, sometimes. Uh, we say, we talk about uh, us being from Mississippi, but um, we really just focus on becoming better teammates, uh, better players, and uh, trying to make this team be, uh, be more successful as it can be. Two Aggies are heading home. Although hailing from opposite ends of the state, Avery Genesee and Justin Evans are Mississippi born and bred. Just going back to Mississippi. Uh, I haven't been there in a minute because I've been down here busy with football, school. So it's just a great opportunity to see my friends and family and play ball in front of them. South Haven High School means a lot to me. Um, I take a lot of pride, uh, charge the nation. You know, um, Juco route was pretty different. Uh, basically had to kind of learn how to be a man kind of learn how to live by yourself. Uh, it taught me a lot. I knew Coach Price a long time ago because I went to an old Miss camp. So I met him there. So uh, our relationship grew more and more each and every day. So um, when I found out he was at Texas and them, that kind of like tipped it over a little bit. And also, I didn't want to stay in Mississippi no more. I wanted to uh, try something new, uh, you know, move forward. the latest the Aggies have played a true road game in 85 years and the first time they've left the state of Texas this season. Don't give them any confidence, all right? If you jump out on them quick, they're going to quit themselves. You guys got me on that? Make them one-dimensional. Stop the run. Stop the run. When it's time to rush the passer, we're going to rush the passer. I think it's real simple, fellas. Real simple. It's on us, like Coach said. we got to be the most excited team to play tonight. We're on the road for the first time in a hostile environment this year. What are we going to do about it? <laughs> it's on us to get each other going. Let's get this thing rocking tonight and believe in each other, believe in the coaches, Let's get this team turned up, right? There you go. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Memorial Herman, official sports medicine partner of Texas A&M Athletics. 
College football prime time rolls into Mississippi. The scene in the Grove, one of college football's best, where they never lose a party. Their Rebels did lose a game, though, a week ago down the road in Memphis and look to rebound at home tonight. coaches this week did not want to use the term elimination game in this side of the SEC but really you lose this game you're not going to make it to yeah. Atlanta you have to win to keep pace but I think even more than that both of these teams didn't like what happened last week right. and want to get that taste out of their mouth get things going in the right direction tonight First quarter, neither team finds traction. Late in the frame, Ole Miss seeks out the end zone. Kelly on a naked bootleg throws across his body and got it. Devin Ingram for the touchdown. Just 32 yards of offense and time running out on the opening period. AM tries to get moving. Run blitz. And White runs right through it. Out to the 29. Long play fake by Allen, and then he has to eat it after a pickup of a yard. That play didn't look right for no. some reason. Here's Allen off the of play action, wide open. Ricky Seals Jones with a hurdle job, and he's got a first down. And not going to make it with that room. Carson brought down by Youngblood. I think he's a yard shy. First quarter is going to come to a close. And Ole Miss on their home turf in front. And Drew Kayser set the punt. Offensively, the Aggies couldn't sustain a drive or get synced up. The defense continued to stand tall, keeping their team in the game. A&M remained within striking distance because this group took every shot Ole Miss threw at them. After a couple of Rebel field goals, the Aggies needed a play. Deshaun Hall and Miles Garrett back in. They were getting a break the first couple plays of this possession. This one's batted in the air and intercepted by Garrett. Huge play by Garrett. First tipped the pass and then picked it off. What a turn of events. They let Miles Garrett go and try to throw the screen, and Garrett shows his athleticism, times his jump, knew it was a screen, and went up and got the football. Great play. The Aggies have to capitalize here. Missed opportunities are mounting on this night. And just before half, mistakes are two. Gleason will punt. First three and out suffered by Ole Miss. And he dropped it. And the ball is still out. Ole Miss might have it back. They do. And now Jordan Wilkins blasts his way for nine yards. AM came out of there with the football. They thought they had a fumble recovery. Armani Watts thinks he ripped it out before he was down. Maybe he did. The runner lost possession of the ball, started hitting the ground. There was a fumble. Coming by Texas AM. First and 10, the 14 yard line. Big play. Yep. And so AM's got it back at the 14 yard line. Again, they have three timeouts and a minute 21 to work. Allen. Avoided some pressure somehow. Ball tipped. Intercepted by Webster. 
They give it right back. Turnovers make such a huge difference. In a sudden change situation, you come out, you're back against the wall, and once again, they force a field goal attempt instead of giving up a touchdown. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by Pepsi, official soft drink of Texas A&M athletics. Halftime here in Oxford, Mississippi, in our matchup between the 15th-ranked Aggies of Texas A&M and number 24, Ole Miss. Couldn't play any worse than we played the first half. Now, let's go! Let's take control of this game right now! Sir. Right now! Defense, make a play, fight out of field, kickoff team! Let's get this thing rolling! Well, Coach Sumlin, how do you address it with your team when most of your challenges are self-inflicted with penalties and turnovers? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and it's a poor half football. Uh, the good news is we're in the game. And, uh, you know, we, we can play a lot better. We're going to have to. And uh, that, that was the message at halftime. Just, just settle down. All right. Do what we do. Let's play football. Let's, let's, let's correct our own mistakes. Rebels get the ball first to start the third quarter as well with the lead. Ooh, almost wow. a big play by Miles Garrett as Walton almost caught that thing up. And that's dangerous. He's too good of an athlete to try to block him that way. Third and five. Kelly. Throw is low and complete, and AM's defense does its job to open up the third quarter. Well, that's what they needed. They, they needed to get a good stop. Good stop, defense! Good stop, defense! Allen, deep. And overshot everybody. Carson stops in the hole, cuts back, and got four. Aggies defense did their job. They got the ball back for their offense. Now it's up to Kyle Allen and the offense to pick up at least six more yards and keep things going here. He has to pull the trigger in a hurry, and it's knocked out of there by Trey Elston. Well, he was trying to go to Caden Smith, and it's a bad throw. If the ball is thrown outside, it's a completion. It's thrown behind, and it actually hits Elston in the face. And incomplete. That one got deflected. Throwing deep from his own end zone and over to the oldest sideline again. Well, they just don't have any rhythm offensively. You know, it, it, it's Kyle Allen, it's Christian Kirk, and they just don't have any rhythm. Kelly squares his body and goes deep down the middle of Treadwell. Got him, and he's gone. Touchdown. <laughs> 58 yards on the touchdown pass. The defense wasn't dominant, but they dug deep and hung in. The offense was simply stuck in a rut. The D did their best to give this team a chance, and safety Armani Watts, with his 20 tackles, left it all on the field and left his mark. And he did it again, and they lost about five. Great play by Armani Watts. He's having a good game. That is the wrong direction, Jordan Wilkins. Kelly in trouble, runs up in the middle of the pocket and threw into traffic and had it intercepted by Armani Watts. Big play by Watts, who's had a big night. Kelly, oh, shouldn't have done that, maybe. Donovan Wilson, I think, has the interception. The defense kept Ole Miss out of the end zone for almost the entire second half, but there would be no comeback on this night. The Aggies taste defeat for the second straight week. Couldn't convert offensive. The defense was on the field a long time. They held up. I mean, they we gave up one big play. Our defense came out, played hard, played hard until the end. And, you know, not letting them in the end zone on the last two plays. So a lot of guys out there, but uh, we got to be more consistent. I don't, I don't know that we've ever been around that many penalties and uh, and, and and turnovers in a game, particularly on the road. That you know, you've got zero opportunity to win. The Polls, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by ASCO, your place for case construction equipment in Texas. In Oxford, the Aggies never seized momentum. Therefore, they just couldn't get rolling. I thought uh, our d defense continued to play hard. You know, we gave up one really big play to uh, tread well on the, on the deep pass, but, uh, you know, we, even though we didn't move the ball offensively, uh, I thought our special teams did a great job of, of creating long fields 
and uh, our defense hung in there and, and played, you know, two touchdowns and three field goals. Um, in, in that environment, you know, we, we've got to be better offensively in, 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 in all games, but particularly in that situation, that, to, to have a chance to win. Texas A&M's season has now lost momentum. A 5-0 start has given way to consecutive defeats. It's never been more important to hold tight to each other. When you're in these situations, leadership uh, from within becomes important. You know, guys are disappointed. Guys aren't playing as well as they want to play. Uh, you know, which you, you know, teams with great leadership within, um, you know, don't point fingers. They go to work on themselves. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of things we got to fix. But uh, in order to do that, you know, we, we've got to give them the right plan. We've got to show some leadership. We've got to get our guys pointing in the right direction. Um, and I don't doubt it. I think, uh, you know, getting on the plane, our, our guys are disappointed. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, they know that, that we can play better and we will. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Ole Miss is in the books. Monday begins a new week. Kevin Sumlin and his Aggies know all too well the risks associated with dwelling on the past. It simply isn't allowed when playing in perhaps the toughest division in college football. The season just moved past the midway point. There's a lot of football left to play. Texas A&M will take the field Saturday with a renewed sense of purpose. You just gotta take it one week at a time, you know, get past you know, this week with a win, and then, you know, focus on the next. But, you know, there's a lot of football left, and uh, I feel like we can Still, still, still do amazing things. Yeah, you just gotta put it behind you and just correct your mistakes and control what you can control, and that's the next week. Yeah, that's really when you, um, the best time you need to lead it to come out. And you know, really just going back to work. You know, that's what we do in this program. We work, and we've got a great room, especially starting the offensive line. You know, we're gonna go in and put work, uh, put it in this week. You know, and that starts Monday and it started yesterday and starts today, every day, you know, and we're gonna get it done. Um, a real team, a real family, a real brotherhood doesn't let outside say so, get into a locker room, infect what we do and how we do things. So that's one of the things that I'm doing is I'm going, you know what I'm saying, I'm going around talking and eating it before practice and we mean a hold and I break it out, just remind those guys that, that, that we just don't say Family one two three. We really we really live by that. Like we really are a brotherhood. Family on three. One two three. Hey. 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 Hey.